Hey everyone, welcome back to another video here on Dark Psych. I am Dark, and today we're going to be taking a look at the room web scanning on TryHackMe. Uh, learn the basics of automated web scanning. So this is meant as a nice introduction on uh, how to do some basic analysis of web applications via automated scanning with Nikto and Zap. Uh, this is a room that's going to be expanded upon at some point. There is a full web enumeration room in the works. It might actually be out by the time that this video is released. I definitely recommend checking that room out after you do this one. Um, but for now, let's go ahead and dive into task one, pull the lever cronk. Web scanning represents one of the core constructs of modern pen testing. Quite simply, most of what we interact with on a daily basis is the internet, and therein there is a multitude of ever-widening number of vulnerabilities. Within this room, we will investigate two of the most common scanners, Nikto and Zap. Uh, there is a third scanner that is the Burp scanner, uh, however that is a premium tool. I do talk about that in the Burp room, and I definitely recommend checking that out. If you are subscribed, that is one of my favorite uh, rooms on the site for subscribers, not just because I made it. Um, I spent a lot of time on that room, and it, it truly came out as a nice labor of love. That being said, let's go ahead, we'll start the attack box, and then start the machine attached to this room, and then click completed on this first task. Let's go ahead and jump into task two. I'm supposed to scan with that. All right, this is a short quiz of the various switches used with Nikto, as well as a quick scan against our target. All you need for this is the help menu for Nikto. Include all parts of the switch, unless otherwise specified. This includes the dash. Uh, so first and foremost, what switch do we use to set our target host? I'm going to go ahead and go through this as we're still waiting for this to launch. You can view all this via the help menu in Nikto. This is going to be dash H for the host. A little bit different. Typically, dash H is the help menu. Nikto is just a little bit different and it switches in this way. Websites don't always properly redirect to their secure transport uh, port and can sometimes have different issues depending on the manner in which they are scanned. How do we disable secure transport? That is going to be no SSL. That's saying that we're not using SSL in our scanning. Um, sometimes when you scan a website, it'll have a different web server running on port 80 versus port 443. So, and sometimes they cannot even be done correctly with SSL. So just keep that in mind. You, you want to be able to react depending on if there's SSL set up and what port it's running on. How about the opposite? How do we force SS or secure transport? That is going to be dash SSL. What if we want to scan or set uh, a specific port to scan? Uh, this is similar to Nmap in that it's just going to be dash P. As the web is constantly evolving, so is Nikto. A database of vulnerabilities represents a core component to this web scanner. How do we verify that this database is working and free from error? This is going to be dash db check. If instructed to, Nikto will attempt to guess and test uh, both files within directories as well as usernames. Which switch and numerical value do we use to set Nikto to enumerate usernames in Apache? Keep in mind, this option is deprecated in favor of plugins. However, it's still a great option to be aware of for situational usage. That is going to be dash mutate and then three. Again, this is something that you can view within the help menu. Suppose we know the username and password for a web form. How do we set Nikto to do a credential check? Suppose the username is admin and the password is pretty awesome password 1234. Uh, that additionally is not a bad password. Uh, we can do that with the dash, dash ID flag and then admin colon and then our password. Pretty awesome password one two three four let's scan our target machine we can go ahead and do that with pulling this up let me see if nikto is actually installed by default on the attack box and sure enough it is so it's nick toe dash h and then let's grab our target 10 10 63 186 we'll go ahead and let that run and we can see that sure enough right away we have our server which is going to be Apache 2.4.7. This box is vulnerable to very poor directory control due to its web server version. What directory is indexed that really shouldn't be? 
Uh, let's see. So this is going to be a config uh, directory. This is not something that uh, should be indexed or available. Um, this indicates that the configuration information might be available and we might be able to read it. Uh, since this is DVWA, that's kind of to be expected. Um, however, again, something that we don't necessarily want to deal with. And again, we can see DVWA at the top. That's what I was double checking. Uh, so that is going to be config, maybe. There we go. While Nocto scans can take a while to fully complete, which switch do we set in order to limit uh, the scan to end at a certain time? That is going to be the dash until switch. Kind of a unique one in this case. But wait, there's more. How do we list all of the plugins available? That's actually pretty straightforward. It's just list plugins. On the flip side of the database, plugins represent another core component to Nikto. Which switch do we use to instruct Nikto or Nikto to find or to use plugin checks to find out of date software on the target host? Keep in mind that when testing this command, we need to specify the host we intend to run this against. For submitting your answer, use only the base command with the uh, out of date option. So we can do Nash plugins and then outdated. Again, that's just gonna look for outdated software. And then finally, what if we'd like to use our plugins to run a series of standard tests against the target host? We can do that with dash plugins and then tests. Cool. Let's move into task three, zip zap. This is going to be a brief quiz and tutorial over using the OS Zap scanner. Let's go ahead and start simple and launch Zap. Uh, this can be done in a number of ways. So you can see there's a couple commands here. I am going to launch this via the command line. Uh, it should just be OWASP-Zap, maybe, or Zap Proxy. There we go. Zap Proxy is usually the one that works. Mark that as complete since it's going to go ahead and launch. Uh, launch zap. What option uh, do we set in order to specify what we are attacking? Uh, that is going to be, we'll give it just a moment for zap to come up, but it should be the URL to attack. And we'll see that right away in the GUI here. We'll go ahead and enter that in, but I'll wait for this to come up. Uh, we can go ahead and close out of that. We don't really need it. Um... And this is going to ask if we want to manage our add-on. So similar to Burp Suite, uh, we can go through and add a bunch of plugins. I'm going to go ahead and close it because we don't really need that. Um, however, if we close this, we should see an automated scan and we can see our URL to attack. It's a little bit chopped off since I'm using the attack box and it's kind of truncated uh, just from the smallish, or smaller screen, but we can still see that option here. Launch the attack against our target. So we'll go ahead and... Uh, enter in HTTP and then 10, 10, let me scroll up and see what my target is, 63 and then 186. Uh, we'll go ahead and use our traditional spider and go ahead and click attack. Okay, maybe it's not happy with me. 10, 10, let's try, what was it, 63 and then 186. There we go. And we can see that it's running right away. So we can see that it's running an active scan after spidering the website. Uh, launch the attack against our target. Throughout the course of this attack, you may notice this is very similar to Nikto. Similar to Nessus uh, uh, versus OpenVos, uh, Nikto and Zap uh, both offer different perspectives on a host. And as such, it's useful to know how to leverage both scanning tools in order to maximize your own visibility into a situation wherein noise doesn't particularly matter. So let's break this down just real quick. I, it can be useful to run multiple tools against the same host because different tools will have different uh, data that they return. Uh, the noise bit at the end is when we're in a situation where we don't really care about being caught, or we don't care about how much... Uh, we don't care about our scans being detected. Uh, we can produce a lot of noise. Um, and in this case, Zap is a very loud tool. And because of that, um, we need to worry about necessarily being caught. Now, with the traditional pen test, this isn't something that you really need to worry about and not something that's really within 
it, honestly, you don't really care about being caught. Typically, you're going to notify the client if you think you got caught or you think you triggered an alert or got locked out of something. And you just say, hey, I got caught. Cool. Let's move on. And that's that's pretty much it. So in short, you want to run multiple tools against your target host, especially in a situation where you can, as it's going to give you more information back. Zap will discover a file that contains pages which well-behaved web indexing engines will read in order to know which sections of a site to avoid. What is the name of this file? Lucky for us, our scanner isn't what we would call well-behaved. Uh, that is going to be the robots.txt file. And that's something that if you've done any web app pen testing, you'll know that this is something that we want to uh, check right away, especially because there can be a lot of sensitive information exposed in this file. One entry is included in the disallow section of it. So we can see... It looks like we have um, not necessarily any our alerts. We should have it under sites here. Uh, we can see that we've got the robots.txt, and this should just have the forward slash. It's just saying don't scan or don't index anything in this site. Uh, since we're just having the root of the site listed there, uh, well-behaved indexers like uh, Google's indexers, would know that, hey, I'm not going to index anything on this site other than the actual name of the site, and it'll just stop there. For us, we're going to brute force our way in and see what we can find. And when I say brute force, I mean we're going to fuzz the end of the URL to see what pages we can get just by guessing what pages are there. So, for example, forward slash login.php, forward slash robots.txt, um, sitemap.xml, and so on and so forth. Zep will find a directory that contains images for our application. What is the path for that directory? That is going to be like the DVWA, and it looks like it didn't find the images in this specific case, maybe. Um, so in this case, we can just guess that it's going to be DVWA and then images. Typically, that would come up. Um, Again, it depends on if you're doing brute forcing in uh, accompanying with this as well. This website doesn't force a secure connection by default, and Zap isn't pleased with it. Which, or which cookie is Zap uh, upset about? Um, so that is going to be the HTTP-only cookie. That's actually with how the cookies are accessed. Um, I don't want to go too far into it for the sake of this video. This is technically incorrect, so just know that HTTP-only is just the answer to that question. So just be aware that that is a little bit different than what that is, uh, what the question is asking there. That's just a deprecated question because this is such an old room on Try Hack Me. Uh, we can see 632 days old. It's pretty old. And unfortunately, this is one of the rooms that I've made. So this is the one room which I'm very happy to have replaced. <laughs> Featured in various rooms on Try Hack Me, cross-site scripting is a vicious attack that is becoming more common on the open web. What alert does Zap produce to let us know that this site is vulnerable to cross-site scripting? Note there are often a couple warnings produced for this. Look for one uh, more so directly related to the web client. That is going to be the, uh, let's see, web browser cross-site scripting protection not enabled. And we can do that with the web, uh, just typing in that alert. There we go. The Zaf proxy spider represents the component responsible for crawling the website. Which site is uh, found to be out of scope? Uh, so we find, let's see. Uh, let me see if I can find it in here. So we can see that there's an out of scope one here um, within the actual history or the spider. Um, and we can see that it's the www.dvwa.co.uk. And we can put that right in here. Uh, www.dvwa.co.uk. And there we go. Zemp will use primarily two methods in order to scan a website. Which of these two HTTP methods uh, requests content? That is going to be this method right here. And that's just going to be a get request. Which option uh, attempts to submit content to the website? That is going to be post. So pretty straightforward, and that's something that if you are interested in learning a little bit more about, I definitely recommend checking out the room on Web Fundamentals. It breaks down these requests quite a bit more. 
Otherwise, that is going to do it for this room. If you have any questions, I will have, as always, the Try and Hack Me Discord and subreddit linked in the video description below. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please subscribe to me on YouTube, follow me on Twitter, and until next time, happy hacking!